Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Formtastic gem. We've mentioned this a couple times while we were using like Simple Form. Uh, the reason why I usually use Simple Form in Rails apps is just because if I have like Bootstrap or something and I'm trying to show off the form real quick, uh, Simple Form is just like a quick little flag and then, you know, the thing looks at least half decent in terms of a demo. Uh, but Formtastic is also a very cool tool. It's going to actually build out a lot of your forms for you and allow you a fair bit of customization. It's pretty intuitive compared to what uh, I'm used to at least. Uh, so you can see right here, if you have like a uh, at article, just do a f.inputs and then you can uh, do a do block and inside of there you can declare specifically which uh, you know columns from that uh, model you want to use for your, for your form. Or you can just do a f.inputs and it'll intuitively figure out, okay, this has like a title, a body, and like a, a category drop down, and it'll figure that out for you. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, and to do this demo, I actually just have a bunch of chat GPT code, which is pretty neat. I did test it, it is working, so that's always a good sign. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and we'll get started from there. Now to get started, we're just gonna do a Rails new, I'll call it video, and then we'll CD into the video project and we'll run a code dot. Just going to run all those at once so that we can get this out of the way. Now the general setup here is going to be pretty similar to what you would normally do with like simple form. Uh, it might just require a little bit of extra uh, setup in terms of like modifying the forms uh, themselves. Now with uh, how this is going to run, uh, the chat GPT code actually skips a step, but that's fine. I'm going to come over to our gem file and we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're just going to add the formtastic gem. Go ahead and paste that. I'll have a link to this in the video description as well as the source code for this video. So once that's done, we can then run a bundle command to install this gem. There we go. We can now run a uh, Rails G formtastic colon install command. It'll look just like this, formtastic colon install. Go ahead and run that. That should be good for you. Now that we have that done, we can pretty much just go ahead and get started. Now there is a uh, style sheet section along with some other stuff that you can look at in this uh, GitHub repo, uh, but I kind of like this example, so we'll just step through this. So once we have that done, we're gonna come into our terminal and we're just gonna run a couple of commands. The first one is gonna be to generate a scaffold for a post. Each post will have a title of type string, a body of type uh, text, and a category colon references. So we'll go ahead and we'll run that. Now, depending on your database, it might be unhappy that we're referencing the category before we create it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create the category now. It's just something to be aware of. Sometimes they don't like it happening in that order. So now we've created the category. Uh, I didn't really mention it, but the category just has a name of type string. Once that's done, we can go ahead and step out of here and come over to our application. First thing I want to do is come into config and routes.rb. I want to change the root of the application to be the post controller and the index action. That's GitHub Copilot doing that autocomplete. Uh, and once that's done, we can then go ahead and create our first form. To do this, we're going to come over to our app views posts and our underscore form. And you can see right here, this looks very different from what a traditional Rails app might look like. So, or even like what simple form would generate for us. Uh, in a traditional Rails app, it's gonna have like your errors at the top. And then for each of the forms, you're gonna have something that looks like this. It's gonna be like a div and you're gonna have like a f.label and it's gonna be a f.label for like the title. And then it's gonna, oops, it's also gonna have like a class there. And then you're gonna have the f dot, uh, I don't know, text underscore field for the title. And both of these might have like a style of display colon block or whatever, right? It's really not the best looking code that's generated out of the box, but you know, it works for its purposes. And then for each of the inputs, uh, you're gonna have a uh, separate block. With simple form, you're gonna have something that looks a little bit like this. So you're gonna have like a f.input for the title, the body, and the category, and it's gonna generate those things for you with the, uh, with the label and the text field. So those are your two options. Now with semantic form, this looks like it's a little bit of extra overhead over simple form, because again, simple form might look like this. So semantic form has two extra lines here. But what's really neat is we can actually just get rid of this and get rid of this. And we can just say, I want a F dot inputs. So I'm going to leave it like the uh, way it was generated, something like this. And we're going to come over here. We're going to start our server with a Rails S. 
We're going to come over to uh, localhost port 3000. We'll run our migrations. We'll click new post. And you can see here, this is what the form looks like out of the box. Again, it's pretty basic. That's fine though. Uh, and you can see here we have the title, the body, and the category. Now we don't have a category yet, so I'm going to come over to localhost port 3000. And I'm going to say, let's create, uh, oops, let's go over to slash categories slash new. And we're just going to say this is the general category. We'll click create category. There you go. That's done. You might also notice that we already have these uh, formtastic form right here with the name and the create button. It's all inside of this uh, questionable looking box. But again, we don't have any like bootstrap or anything enabled. So in this case, this is just, you know, out of the box. It's not going to look the best, but that's okay. Now let's come over here and let's refresh. We can now see it's pulling that general category from the ones we already created. So let's come over here, let's do another one. Let's just call this like tech. And now we have like two categories to mess around with. We'll refresh and now we can see we have both of those. So that's already working out of the box. That's pretty neat. What I wanna do now is take a look at this and say, all right, we have our f.inputs here. Let's get rid of the body maybe. And then we'll refresh and now you can see we have the title and the category so it's pretty easy to modify this but what happens if you don't want to uh you know modify the f dot inputs well you can just come out here and that gets rid of your little box now you just have this uh you know set of i guess allies or whatever this is uh where you just have your list items uh in a bulleted list right yeah it looks like it's an ally so that's pretty cool. But now what I want to do is come over here and let's take the uh, title and the category out of here. So if we refresh now, we'll see there's just nothing there. It's just the empty box because it's a do block. Uh, but what we can actually do is we can get rid of this end and get rid of this do block. And you can see here, because it knows what's in this post, it knows the post has a category, a title, and a body. Now it's not going to grab these in the correct order necessarily. So if you want to order these differently, you might want to come back here and have the inputs for each one. But uh, if you just uh, if you just try it and you, you do it like this and you say, okay, that's good enough for whatever I'm doing, uh, this is a really fast way to prototype your stuff, right? Like you can even, uh, I think you can come in and say, uh, we don't want to do this block right here. We just want to have a f dot actions because it knows that one of the actions is going to be to create the thing right so uh very cool it, it does uh it does take a little bit of getting used to but hopefully you can see uh how quickly you can build something out that's customizable as opposed to what you would normally have and you know you can even come in here and you can say okay well i like this category right here but i kind of want to customize it a bit so i like having the body and the title but for the category i want to have something where i say category the collection is category.all and the prompt is select a category so we can come over here now and we can see this now says select a category by default so you can you can very quickly prototype some of this stuff out which is a little bit more difficult when you're trying to use other you know form helpers uh, mostly because they handle the, the magic in a slightly different way uh, while here a lot of it you know it's it's built in and then also pretty flexible and you can see the examples they have here they do have examples for like nested uh, posts if you need to do that where you have like an author and a post uh, they have options for I mean pretty much everything in here uh, there is even a section that I noticed that covers the uh, auto grow for uh, text areas if you wanted to have your text area auto grow we've covered this before with the stimulus components website where if we click on get started we can come down here to the text area auto grow and click see demo uh, if you're not familiar stimulus components has a whole bunch of uh, small little javascript you can import and use in a stimulus controller uh, which adds additional functionality for like drop downs or color pickers and stuff like that but in the case of the auto grow right here you can see uh, if we grab this and we paste, it will automatically resize the text area, which doesn't work by default in a, gener in a, a generic uh, like HTML text area. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here to take a look at. Uh, I can't really do it justice and cover it all. I just wanted to give like a very high level overview here. Uh, and thankfully, ChatGPT was able to generate quite a bit of the uh, boilerplate there. So I just mixed what ChatGPT had with what's on the GitHub repo. Uh, so that I didn't have to go in and like manually build out these forms because ChatGPT missed the install step and not having the install step, wherever that is, uh, right here. This causes the forms to not be generated out of the box. You still get the default Rails form fours, which of course is just more work that I don't want to have to do. I'm very lazy. 
Uh, that's why I use Ruby on Rails because it does all the work for me. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd uh, cover this and, uh, you know, hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, hopefully I will see you in the next uh, video. And remember, the source code, if you're interested, is in the video description. Although this is pretty simple, so hopefully you won't need it too much. And hopefully you're good with just the GitHub repo. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. Uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.